Dr. Moshe Lewis here at Matt Argyle celebrating the color purple, and we are blessed to have Olivia with us, better known as Tiffany Burgess. Now, the first question I have to ask you is, getting a degree in Masters in Public Health, that is not something every actress in that movie has. Talk to us about what inspired you to do that and how you continue to give back. Yes, so my undergrad degree with the Hampton University, so right. shout out to yeah, HBCUs, HU, uh, yes, HU, uh, uh, is in biology. Mm -hmm. And I've always been passionate about public health and health care and giving back. So when I got my master's from Emory yes. and I worked in public health, but I've always had a creative side yes. and I've always tried to balance the two and not give up on one dream while, you know, working with the, the left side, don't give up the right side of your brain. So I've been fortunate to be able to work in public health for years, but also be an actress, a writer, producer and just kind of trust God and let the, the blessings come and flow. So I work, I still work in public health. Yes, I know. <laughs> I have a degree in public health, so I'm very familiar. So I caught my eye. Yeah, yeah, but um, I'm also just balancing the life of being a creative and, you know, maintaining that, that momentum that I have with my public health career. Sure. Yeah. Talk to us about the writing journey because you've done several things working from books all the way up to screenplays. It's a tremendously up and down road. Yeah. Talk to us about the inspiration and the challenges. You know what? The challenge is time management and the challenge is getting past writing, writer's block because that's real and it's going to happen. But being able to write children's books and screenplays and feel like my words are inspiring people, like whether it's children who are reading my words or actors and actresses such as myself who are actually putting my words on screen and acting them out, it's, I mean, it's, it's an indescribable feeling. You have to be patient with yourself. It's a process. Um, I'm a type A personality. I, I couldn't can, imagine. <laughs> Two <I> careers can, <laughs> juggling. I can, I can get very you know, frustrated at times with myself and the progress that I'm making, but you have to be okay with where you are in your life. I really am big on trusting God with your journey and going along with that journey, right? And that happens with writing. You know, it took me, the first book, it took about a year. The second book, it took about a year. The third book that just came out, um, Decisions, Decisions, came out in like January, February of this year. That took a little over a year, you know? So it's a process, nothing happens overnight. You have to be patient with yourself. Well, I'm going to let her ask a question in a second, but since you brought up Decisions, Decisions, talk about the decision to write that because yeah. that type of story we don't often get to hear, how a boy is really sort of navigating this. Talk to us about that. So um, my partner is an actor and an uh, engineer and an entrepreneur and all these things. And he's been in Black Panther. He's been in a lot of films himself. He's starring in, you know, Average Joe. But he went to Hampton University with me. Right, exactly. And his degree is in engineering. And, you know, we were talking about when we grow up, when we're younger, people often ask us, what do you want to be when you grow up? And you have to give one answer, right? My answer was like, I want to be a teacher at first, like my mom, and then I want to be a doctor forever. Ever. That was my one answer. But I've been writing since I was six years old. Like, my mother would tell anybody to win writing contests. Like, it was where I could escape. Sure. Right? Under the table. Under the table. I think you really did. You yeah. read. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate <laughs> that. <laughs> and um, so, he and I were talking about how we, A, need to see more books with um, Black Boy Joy and Black Boys, you know, on the cover. And um, also stories about children not having to choose one thing at like a young age but being open to exploring and chasing their dreams and just exploring different opportunities and realizing like him because it's loosely based like on what he's been able to do is that you can accomplish multiple things and, and actually be high performing like he was high performing engineer he's a high performing actor he's a producer and then he owns like all these businesses in Atlanta and the two of us both have that you know, that type of lifestyle where we're balancing all these careers. We were like, why not write a book about it and try to inspire children, especially those that look like us, to dream big. And, you know, speaking of children, you know, you are a, a, a mentor to so many, and so many children, boys and girls, look up to you, and they want to follow in your footsteps. So what kind of advice would you give them to go down that career path? You know what? I would say don't sell yourself short. It's okay to dream big. I was one of those people I feel like who also was kind of scared to dream big like 
why, why be scared to dream big? If you're going to work hard at it, you there's no telling what you can accomplish. I tell children that all the time. I tell my 70s and nephews that all the time. If I can do it, you can do it. You have to be able to, you know, balance right and time management. And you also have to be willing to work hard. You know, nothing is just going to come easy and just be given to you. But I do really believe, like, if you have a passion for something and you work at that passion or you have a God-given talent and you nurture that talent, the rest will fall into place. You'll start to see, you know, the fruits of your labor. In, in a musical. So how did you prepare know, right? for this? I, um, I'm represented by People Store Agency in Atlanta, right, Talent Agency. And I've been on um, my first role was on The Wonder Years on ABC right, yeah. and, like, you know, other. Nikia Dillard. Yeah, and so I got the audition, and they were just like, you know, here's your audition for Olivia. You got to turn it around pretty quickly. I, I love the color purple. Yeah. So, like, my heart was racing. I shot my audition, audition. We sent it in, and about three weeks went by. And, you know, like I said, I. My acting coach, oh, shout out to Dwayne Boyd, and he, he's always like, do the audition, Tiffany, and throw it away. Like, I tend to get in my mind, get in my head, and I did. I prayed on it. I did the best I could in my audition. I gave it what, you know, what I feel like I needed to give it. Three weeks later, I got a call from my agent and was like, congratulations. You know, you're the, you won the role of Olivia. Welcome to the color purple. And I just started screaming. And <laughs> Rightly so. <laughs> And then um, the rest was like, let's, you know, you have to go to rehearsals, get the music, and went off. it took off from there. Absolutely. One element I want to tease out, because this is also a difficult story, is how you best feel that some of our community that may shy away from it best really address it and not be so afraid about really embracing the color purple. You know what? So I... My partner, my film partners, and I talk about this all the time. People, I understand not wanting to sit in trauma, right? And there's this thing about, I don't want to see another black trauma movie, but I, I feel like you have to rebrand that. I branded, I rebranded as Black Triumph. Right? Because the color purple is about surmounting all of these obstacles. If you watch her take her power back, you watch these beautiful black women all, you know, get their voices and take their power back. You can turn that from black trauma, because it was traumatic, to Celie's triumph. And that's how I like to see it. That's what I've been telling, you know, folks who may be, like, shying away, like, oh, it's so hard to watch. I get it. But watch it. Keep watching it. Because in the end, you know, Celie does win, in my opinion. She gets that power back. She gets her voice back. She gets that triumph that we want, you know, that we want to see. So that's how I've been trying to encourage people to be open to, to seeing it. Absolutely. I'll let you have the last question. <laughs> you asked so many great questions. But I like what you said about trauma to triumph, you know. So, so many people are going through things. They're dealing with internal issues that are, they're dealing with. So when they see this movie, what would you like to inspire them with? Um, you know, I want people to, to see the movie. I want them to read the book, right? Because the, the musical is closely, you know, very closely related to, to the book. And I want people to understand it's not a remake. You can't touch a classic, right? This is the first big screen version of the musical. And I just want the takeaway to be, you know, people, uh, seeing someone overcome all of those obstacles, because all of us are going to deal with obstacles in life, right? And seeing them take their power back and walk in that power. Having that voice is so important. I'm really, I'm a big advocate about black women and having our voice and to like watch the women from Seeley to Sophia to, you know, um, Suge to Squeak, just having a voice to Nettie, you know, it's like to Olivia being, re, you know, reconnected with her, her mother. Um, it's, I want people to, to walk away with that feeling of, oh, they won. They got their voices back, like that energy that that love, right? That's the yeah. Well, your love and inspiration comes across. Um, so appreciate you giving us time and coming out today and supporting yet another black business and also one owned by women. It's so important. I know. And so um, I obviously have looked at some of your production work and um, I just wish you continued success in your Thank career. You. I sure. You. You're one to watch. Thank you.